let me discuss about the management of patients with the congestive heart failure now so if you take the treatment part particularly so in the treatment point of view remember before giving the medical management lifestyle modifications are very important in patients with the congestive heart failure now what are those lifestyle modifications the first is the physical and as well as emotional rest right the physical and as well as the emotional rest now as such the absolute bed rest is rarely required but these individuals they will require a physical rest but not the absolute bed rest and for the emotional rest what we have to prescribe is we have to prescribe a small doses of tranquilizers right small doses of tranquilizers may be used for the emotional rest of the individual next the other and very much important is the correction of obesity weight loss or weight control is also very important and this particular correction of the obesity by restriction of the caloric intake is also important part of the treatment in patients with the congestive heart failure and the other important lifestyle modification is salt restricted diet right the other important part of the management is salt restricted diet and even avoidance of salt retaining medicines and avoidance of salt retaining medicines now for example one of the salt retaining medicine is your nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs these salt retaining medicines should be avoided so these are some of the lifestyle modification the physical and emotional rest the control of obesity by restricting the caloric intake and as well as the salt restricted diet and as well as the avoidance of the salt retaining medicines now coming to the salt restriction now remember in a normal diet right in a normal diet the amount of salt will be 6 to 10 grams of sodium chloride right remember in a normal individual the salt intake it is around 6 to 10 grams per day of your sodium chloride now in patients with the heart failure the salt restriction has to be done so with severe heart failure or whether the individual is having a more severe heart failure what should be the salt restriction is it should be around 0.5 to 2 grams per day right depending upon the severity of the heart failure the salt restriction has to be done so it should be around 0.5 to 2 grams per day and the next and foremost important is in an individuals with most severe cases in an individuals with most severe cases they also require water restriction they also require water restriction so remember these are some of the lifestyle modifications what has to be done in a patient with a congestive heart failure physical and emotional rest controlling of obesity by controlling the caloric intake salt restricted diet around 0.5 to 2 grams per day and in most severe cases even we also have to do the water restriction to reduce the free load so if you see the medical management in patients with the congestive cardiac failure now in patients with congestive cardiac failure we have to achieve the two important goals 
Now what are those two important goals is number one right number one it includes the relief of the congestive symptoms right it includes the relief of the congestive symptoms and to improve the cardiac contractility right so the first and foremost is to relieve congestive symptoms and increase the contractility of the heart now what do you mean by this congestive symptoms because of the left heart failure we are having the pulmonary congestion because of the right heart failure we are having that systemic congestion so you have to relieve this particular congestive symptoms and as well as improve the contractility of the myocardium to see that further congestion will not occur next the second important thing in the part of the treatment is the arrest of right the arrest of the progression of the disease right arrest of progression of the disease and improve survival of the individual and improve the survival of the individual so these are the two important goals what we need to achieve in a patient with the congestive heart failure one is relieving the congestive symptoms and increasing the contractility of the myocardium and the second thing is you have to arrest the progression of the disease and as well as you have to prolong the survival of the individual now what are the group of drugs which are required to relieve the congestive symptoms we have mainly the inotropic agents so if you take the inotropic agents in patients with the congestive heart failure these inotropic agents they include your digoxin they include dobutamine they include dopamine they include amrinone and as well as milrinone so remember these are your inotropic agents so the first one is inotropic agents so these inotropic drugs they will only increase the contractility of the myocardium but they will not increase the survival of the individual so i'll repeat what are those they include digoxin they include dobutamine they include dopamine they include amrinone and as well as milrinone so these are the inotropic drugs next the second group of drugs to relieve the congestive symptoms they include diuretics so these diuretics they will relieve both the pulmonary edema because of the left heart failure and they will also relieve the systemic congestion because of the right heart failure so the examples of these diuretics which are used in patients with a congestive cardiac failure they include the loop diuretics like furosemide so furosemide is a very important drug that need to be given in patients with a congestive cardiac failure to relieve the congestive symptoms and the other diuretics they include the thiazide diuretics and then we have the hydrochlorothiazide and as well as the metolazone so these are the diuretics what we use in patients with the congestive cardiac failure to relieve the congestive symptoms next the other group of drugs required are the vasodilators now remember this particular vasodilators will reduce the afterload on the heart and thereby they will try to improve the contractility indirectly now what are those vasodilators which will reduce the afterload on the heart they include the ac inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers hydralazine and as well as the nitrates so remember these are your vasodilators that is ac inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers nitroglycerin and as well as hydralazine all these drugs what they will do they will cause arterial or vasodilatation and thereby they will reduce the afterload on the heart 
next the other group of drugs which are useful for relieving of your congestive symptoms include your beta blockers remember this particular beta blockers what they will try to do is they will try to reduce the contractility of the myocardium now in patients with the heart failure already the heart is in a failure state where the contractility of the myocardium is completely lost but if we go back to our compensatory mechanisms like what did we discuss in the compensatory mechanisms in the compensatory mechanism we have discussed that there will be activation of the sympathetic nervous system right because of fall in the blood pressure of an individual in order to compensate that fall in the blood pressure there will be activation of the sympathetic outflow now once the sympathetic outflow is increased that will try to increase the myocardial contractility that means when the sympathetic outflow is increased that will try to increase the myocardial contractility and myocardial oxygen demand so activation of sympathetic nervous system is only useful transiently in patients with congestive cardiac failure but in long term these compensatory mechanisms are very much harmful in patients with the congestive cardiac failure so in order to neutralize that activation of the sympathetic nervous system we use this beta blockers remember the important beta blockers in patients with congestive cardiac failure they include bisoprolol they include metoprolol and as well as carvedilol these three beta blockers bisoprolol metoprolol and as well as carvedilol these are very important beta blockers in patients with the congestive cardiac failure so remember in order to relieve the congestive symptoms and increase the contractility we require inotropic drugs diuretics vasodilators and as well as the beta blockers next what was the second thing like what we have to achieve the second thing what we have to achieve is we have to improve the survival of the individual and we have to neutralize compensatory mechanisms and we have to neutralize the cardiac remodeling we have to neutralize the cardiac remodeling now for this what are the drugs which are being useful so now what are the second group of drugs which will arrest and which will reverse the disease progression and prolong the survival of the individual remember these drugs include number 1 ac inhibitors the examples of your ac inhibitors they include the captopril the other ac inhibitors include enalapril lisinopril ramipril and as well as the perindopril so these ac inhibitors they will arrest and they will reverse the disease progression and prolong the survival of the individual with the patients with the congestive cardiac failure so basically these particular ac inhibitors they will reverse the cardiac remodeling and thereby they will improve the survival of the patient with the congestive cardiac failure so you take the second group of drugs which will arrest and which will prevent the cardiac remodeling or which will improve the survival of the individual with the congestive cardiac failure that is arbs angiotensin receptor blockers angiotensin receptor blockers are another group of drugs which are useful for prolonging the survival of the individual so remember in what way these drugs are useful you take either ac inhibitors or you take your arbs angiotensin receptor blockers both these drugs what they will try to do is remember they will inhibit your compensatory mechanism that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system right if we go back to our pathophysiology what we have discussed like we have discussed that the activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system occurs in patients with congestive cardiac failure this particular the product of renin angiotensin aldosterone system it includes your angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 it will cause vasoconstriction 
and as well as aldosterone release. Whenever there is vasoconstriction, remember that will increase the afterload on the heart. And you take aldosterone, it will cause the fibrosis of the myocardium. So both these products, that is the vasoconstriction which is occurring because of angiotensin 2 or aldosterone which is being released from your the angiotensin 2. Both of these, they will reduce the survival of the patient. So you have to inhibit that particular renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now how will you inhibit that renin angiotensin aldosterone system? With the help of either ACE inhibitors and in those individuals who are not tolerating the ACE inhibitors, for them you have to give angiotensin receptor blockers. Now what is the reason why the ACE inhibitors cannot be tolerated? One of the very important adverse effects with ACE inhibitors is the cough, dry cough. So if the individual is unable to bear this particular dry cough, then these individuals have to be given the ARBs, that is angiotensin receptor blockers. Now, and even wherever there is contraindications for the ACE inhibitors, you have to give this particular ARBs. Now, for example, you take in case of pregnancy or you take in case of bilateral renal artery stenosis, the ACE inhibitors, they are contraindicated, right? Now, now you see the ARBs. Now, what are the examples of the ARBs which are given in a patient with a congestive cardiac failure? These ARBs, that is angiotensin receptor blockers, they include losartan, they include candisertan, they include irbisertan. So, losartan, candisertan, and as well as irbisertan, these are some of your angiotensin receptor blockers. Next. The third group of drugs, the third group of drugs which will improve the survival is your aldosterone antagonists. Right, aldosterone antagonists. Now, you take this aldosterone. Remember, aldosterone will cause the cardiac fibrosis or myocardial fibrosis. That means this particular aldosterone, whichever is being released as a part of your activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, it will cause cardiac remodeling. Now, if you want to prevent that particular cardiac remodeling, you have to give this aldosterone antagonist. And this aldosterone antagonist, mainly they include the spironolactone and as well as eplirinone. These two are your aldosterone antagonists which will improve the survival of the patient. Next, the fourth group of drugs which are given in patients with a congestive cardiac failure, they include beta blockers. Right, they include beta blockers. So remember, beta blockers also will improve the survival of the patient. Right? How do the beta blockers improve the survival of the patient? Beta blockers, they are useful for mainly neutralizing the increase in the sympathetic outflow. So whenever the sympathetic outflow is being neutralized, the myocardial oxygen demand will be reduced. So once this myocardial oxygen demand is reduced, the survival of the patient will be increased. Right? So these beta blockers, remember the important beta blockers, they include bisoprolol, they include metoprolol, and as well as carvedilol. So these are the drugs which will improve the survival of the patient with the congestive cardiac failure. Number one, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, aldosterone antagonists, and beta blockers. Remember, digoxin will not improve the survival of the patient. Digoxin will only increase the cardiac contractility, but not it will not improve the survival of the patient. Only these are the group of drugs which will improve the survival of the patient in congestive cardiac failure.